us. Lord, have your way in this service. Bless the musicians, bless the deacons, bless the bringing of the word, we pray, Lord. We're gathered here not to hear man, but to hear the wonderful news of Jesus Christ this morning. Holy Spirit, be in control, we ask. Have your way in this service. We give it to you. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Won't you just turn around, shake one of his hand, welcome each other here this evening. It's been a wonderful day, but we're just getting started. Amen. Just looking for more of the Lord. Amen. Let's sing that song. I'm redeemed by love divine. Glory, glory, Christ is mine. Amen. That's the brothers they would to take up the offering this evening. Just give us unto the Lord. Amen. Sweet is the song I'm singing today. Just see someone down on their knees talking to the air, words are lost on a breeze. Some just see teardrops fall into the floor, just a waste of time, not anything more. But it's a direct line to the throne room Where you can find someone who cares And if you need some proof I can tell you There is power, power in prayer 
can tell you about the time Lord gave me peace Trouble all around You calm the storm in me I remember when I cried out He saved my soul Some have their doubts But I know that I know that I know That it's a direct line To the throne room Where you can find Someone who cares And if you It's a direct line to the throne room where you can find someone who cares. And if you need some proof, I can tell you there is power. mess with me, I'm calling daddy. Because <laughs> I got a direct line. Amen. You got a direct line tonight. Ask and you shall receive. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask the youth choir to come at this time. Even like Tabernacle. Amen. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. Is 
all creation groaning it is. is a new creation coming it is. is the glory of the Lord to be the light within our midst Is it good that we remind ourselves of this? It is. Is anyone worthy? Is anyone whole? Is anyone able to break the seals and open the scroll? The Lion of Jude.
coward and doubt is a thief and worry can drive you straight to defeat but there is a promise he's given to me the battle's been won devil <laughs> call me what you want to ain't no shame on me 
Criticize me all you want to. Ain't no shame on me. Make fun of our worship all you want to. Ain't no shame on me. It's shame on you. Hallelujah. Why? Because I'm free. I'm forgiven. I've been born again. Mercy. Look at your neighbor and say, there ain't no shame on me. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We ask that you just get Adams to come. Amen. And we ask Brother Ron to make his way this evening. Are you ready for the word tonight? Are you under expectation? Amen. That God will move. And God will speak. Amen. Brother Ron requested this, so we're just going to ask him to come as Sister Jessica sings this worship together. Amen. Take me to the king. How many say, I want to go to the king tonight? How many Esthers are in the building? I go to the king. Stay. 
first of all for a bad voice but God knew that a long time ago we're just praying that God would touch us this evening amen would you bow your heads before us tonight what an incredible meeting I just prayed just a few moments ago I said, Lord, you've allowed this to prove that no man is in charge of this. You've allowed this to show us that men can't do it, but you're God. Maybe you have a need in this building tonight that you'd like to say, Father, I'd like to come to the king. I really need an audience with the king. I need it tonight. I can't go away from this meeting without meeting him. Your hands up, lifted. Thank you. I just need a special moment with him. Just one moment will change our life. I really don't need my name called. I know my address. I know what the doctors have said. I know what others have said about me. But in one moment, he can fix every situation of my life. Let's just raise it to God right now. Heavenly Father, we love you with all of our hearts. Just now while you're sweeping through this building, Lord, come by and sweep by our way. Lord, just now I ask you that you would anoint these vocal cords. Now, Lord, I ask you favor that you would help me to speak. Lord, I ask you that you'd bless this audience that they would hear. I pray that you would anoint this service. We've heard you from service after service. And just now, would you just swing by with your special touch? I pray now that you would just bless us this evening. Bless Brother Tim. All the efforts that are going on here. Lord, just, just the other evening we were praying about Japan. And in praying about Japan, whether we should go or not, or just wanting that just shelf assurance to know that you were with us. My request was, Lord, give me a special moment with your children. Lord, you answered our prayer even on Thursday evening. Now you're the same God tonight. Lord and Sister Carol Kinzer is listening in. Father, you're a God that's greater than cancer. The doctor says that it's all over her body, but you're the high physician. You're still God. 
and you're a living God that hears and answers prayer. And Lord, I just ask you now that you would go beside of her bed right now and lay those nail-scarred hands on her father. Lord, you've got a physician's touch that, Lord, in just a moment that can dissolve. You can make kidney stone dissolve tonight. High blood pressure to settle down. A baby to, to be it settled in a womb, Father, to wait its duration. We ask you for your special touch this afternoon. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. God bless you. God bless you. Certainly thank Brother Tim for having me this year and you for putting up with me. We love you. We, we absolutely do with all of our hearts. And thanks, Sister Connie, again for being with me and uh, being my buddy. <clears throat> I want to thank Brother William and Sister Gabrielle for coming from home. This is their home, but they, they live it with us. And they made the trip to be here with us and had a family reunion this week. And we're having two different kinds of family reunions, but... Amen. Brother William works with us in the ministry team there at home. Thank you for being here. God bless you this evening. <clears throat> My heaven, we heard some good word. I thought this morning just was just over the top. I, I stood up and I said, I am a son of God. Amen. I'd like to just take a simple thought for just a little bit this afternoon. Take it back. For Brother Josh, this should be a special spot to start from. For Samuel chapter 25 and verse 3. My voice goes completely out. Brother Wayne will be taking over for me. So Brother Wayne will be praying for me more than anybody in the building. <clears throat> now the name of the man was Nabal. And the name of his wife was Abigail. Now, I want you to just watch this just for a moment. This is what God thought of her. I would like to be complimented like this. And she was a woman of good understanding and of a beautiful countenance. I like it when God tells us we're beautiful. But the man was curlish and evil in his doings. And he was of the house of Caleb. Turn with me to 1 Samuel chapter 30 and verse 1. And it came to pass that when David and his men were come to Ziklag, on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag and smitten Ziklag and burned it with fire. And taken the women captives that were therein, they slew not any, either small or great, but carried them away and went on their way. And David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burned with fire. And their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives. And David and the people that were with him filled their voice and lifted their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. Have you ever been there in your life? Till you came to a valley. Until you come to a spot to where you had no more power power to mourn or to weep or had a word to say. And David's two wives were taken captives. Ahem, 
and the Jezreelites, and Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Cumrelite. And David was greatly distressed, for the people spake of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved. And every man for his sons and for his daughters. Notice these words. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. You may be seated this evening. We read a lot of chapters of David and we see a lot of victories. We see some wars. David was also honest and told us of the defeats and the horrible things that he had to go through in his life. This was a tough spot. David was exiled. He was running. He was in a difficult spot to start off with. He's fighting enemies at every captive. It seemed like every situation he was back was against the wall. <clears throat> and he has men that have gathered with him. You know, if you want to know what kind of a person you are, right. look around at what God gathers to you. God gathered mighty men that were around him, men that were willing to fight, willing to give their life, willing to give everything that they had because they believed that David was on his way to be the king. They were following his leadership. They were following him as he was making his way and they believed that he was ordained of God they believed he was elected and they believed he was anointed of God. Amen. And they get into a battle to which that they are going to win and they're going to have incredible victory and they're away from their wives and their homes and, and they're away from everything that they loved and they went to battle with David the king and they have smote the enemy and they have rejoiced and they danced and they took spoils, and now they're on their way back. Now there's a lot of different kind of enemies that we have to fight in this day. Just like David had to fight. And Philistine is one that will meet you out front. He is the one that will call your bluff. He's the one that will scream at you and holler at you and blabber to you. You remember there was one like that that we could pronounce in the scriptures that tells us that there was a Goliath. And Goliath was screaming, is there anybody over there that will come and meet the challenge of the hour? And made all kind of fun of God and all, all fun of the children of Israel. And you know Goliath could do that all that he wanted to until David showed up. Laodicea can scream all she wants to until the bride of Jesus Christ stands to her feet and realizes that she's the invincible army on the earth in this day. David was fighting these kind of men. But there was another kind of an enemy called an Amalekite. That's the kind that will slip in behind you. While you're away fighting wars. While you're away having victories. And he'll come into your house. He'll come to your house. And try to steal your children. And steal your wife. Steal your home. And try to destroy your courage. Let me just talk to you a little bit about your home. It is the place that God gives you as a sanctuary. It's a place that where you apply a token. And then it's a place away from the world. It's a place that you don't want to have to put up with whirly women and all kind of whirly music and all kind of demon spirits. It's a sanctuary. It's a sanctuary to where you can enjoy your wife and enjoy your children and a place to where you can rest. 
you can have the battles out in the world, but you can come home and be yourself. Come on, you can take your armor off for a little bit. You can take your helmet off for a little bit. You can sit down on your couch and enjoy your wife and enjoy your children. But it takes a dirty, rotten devil that'll come and try to steal that away from you. Are you with me tonight? And David, they're making their way home. It's a three-day journey. They're on their way home. You know, there's just something about going home. It's kind of like a meeting like this. But after you come toward the end, you start making your way home. There's something about going home. An old horse can work in the field all day long. But when he recognizes I'm going to the barn, perks his ears up. His shoulders kind of stretch back. He's ready to go home. You kind of feel that way after a long day's work. It's like a resurrection happens. You work 8, 10, 12 hours and all of a sudden you know you're getting ready to go home. Your wife's there with iced tea and she's gonna meet you at the front door and she's gonna hug your neck and you're gonna sit down on the couch and, and she's gonna climb up on your lap and, and hug you and make you feel good. That's a quote. I just gave you a quote. Not in my world, oh yeah. Somebody ought to say amen somewhere. Yes, sir. Well, we had a meeting tonight. Be at church on time tomorrow now. When they come across the hill, they saw smoke. You know, smoke in the enemy's camp's one thing. Come on, man. Come on. Smoke at your house is a different thing. Let me say it again. Smoke at the enemy's camp's one thing. Smoke at your house is a different thing. You know when it happens to somebody else's world, you tell them, I'll pray for you. I'll encourage you. I'll do a lot of things for you. But what about when it happens at your house? Now let me just drop back. David's the king. But he's gathered some treasures in his life. We've all gathered some treasures that we think a lot of. But there's no treasure like a man's wife. Now the woman that he has gathered as one of his wives, being under a different dispensation. But there was a lady named Abigail that would come into David's life. Let me just talk to you for a moment about her. Abigail, her first husband was cruel to her. He was an idol worshiper. He was a curlish man. He was a brutal beast. He did not appreciate what he had. The scriptures talks about that Abigail was a woman of good understanding. If you do any study, there's only just a couple of women in the entire scriptures that God calls wise. So this woman is not only beautiful, but she's brains too. I want to just talk to you just a moment about your first husband. Your first husband, your nature. He was brutal. He was an idol worshiper. He was cruel to you. He beat you and mocked you and made fun of you. And he never told you who you really was. That 
that you were the queen of heaven, that you were the daughter of God. But one day, one day it struck your life. If we could only realize it don't have to be that way. This woman, though she be serving under him, had respect for him. The king would have destroyed them had it not been for her incredible wisdom. Amazing. God knows how to get us. But not only does God know how to get us, he knows how to keep us. Are you with me now? She is one of the women with the children that when the enemy came, he didn't kill them, but he took them away captive. And in taking them away captive, he takes them as a treasure, as a hostage, as a trophy. That's what Satan wants to do. Young people, adults, no matter your age, he'd like to take you captive. Right. Are you with me? Yeah. But I want you to remember just one moment, whether that she was the wife of Nabal, she was still in God's mind. The wife of David, she was still in God's mind. A captive to the Amalekites, she was still in God's mind. God never forgets you. He never forgets you. David looks over the, the city that once was. The scripture said that they wept until they can't weep no more. They was overwhelmed at their loss. They was overwhelmed at how difficult this moment was. I'm preaching to somebody. Sometimes we come to a spot in our life until the moment is so difficult. Without the help of God, we can't make it through it. David's a king. He feels the responsibility of leadership. He's got generals, captains, foot soldiers. Each one of them have suffered the same loss. So he don't only have loss for himself, he has loss for everybody else. Everybody takes grief a different way. Yes. Oh, if, I, if I was in those shoes, this is what I'd do, really? But what about the whole place under the same situation? Now we do what humans do. We blame somebody. We get ready to blame somebody. And so we blame the pastor. We blame King David because we're in this situation. This is a familiar story. Jesus, if you'd have been home. Jesus, if you'd have been home, our brother would not have died. Brother Branham, if you wasn't off hunting, you could have prayed for this one in the hospital. But there was a caribou that had to be killed and a grizzly bear that had to be killed. We look through our selfish eyes because of our situation and then our moment overcomes us. I'm gonna get there in just a moment. Hang with me. They even spake of stoning him. 
The man only a few days ago, they were fighting in a battle for. Turning with their eyes, looking to make sure he would be okay. Looking across the hill and watching for David in the battle. Is he okay? And they're fighting and they're killing the enemy. And they're looking to see if David is okay. And now the enemy's got in their ear. The enemy's got in their ear and blaming the preachers. Because of my trouble, it's the preacher's fault. It's God's fault. Can I preach to you tonight? Listen, this is what God laid on my heart. Here we are. It's hard for me to imagine that you'd start writing blogs against the messenger that was sent to deliver you. It's hard to believe that you'll come to a spot to where because of the failures of life and the failures of your home that you would want to destroy the message that has been sent to deliver you. These men were fighting for David and they had their eyes on David The reason people get disappointed is they got their eyes on a man. Why is all of these camps in the message got disappointed? They got their eyes on a man. And when the Amalekites came and destroyed their home, they forgot about God who is the resource of all of our strength. I want you to just notice here, but David encouraged himself in the Lord, his God. I want you to understand tonight, you gotta come to a spot to where you encourage yourself. When there's not a preacher there, there's not a meeting that's going on, you gotta stop. And you gotta go back to this right here. Not to your website, but go to this site. And encourage yourself. Read your name in the book. Read your spot in the book. Read it right here. This is my spot. This is my hour. This is my time. This is my battle. God said he'd take care of me. I must encourage myself in God. Well, since it's my turn, I might as well preach. Everybody hear me okay? Don't relax too much, Brother Wayne. In my distress, I called upon the Lord. This is David's writings. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and I cried unto my God. He heard my voice out of his temple and my cry came before him even into his ears. Psalms 25 and one, unto thee, O O the Lord, I do lift up my soul. O my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over me. Psalms 34 and one, I will bless the Lord at all times. I want you to tell your neighbor, I will bless the Lord at all times. 
his praise shall continually be in my mouth. 34 and 8, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Psalms 40 and verse 1, I waited patiently for the Lord and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up out of a horrible pit, out of a miry clay, and set my feet upon a solid rock and established my goings. Why art thou fallen and casting down on my soul? Why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him. Who is the health of my countenance and my God? 56 and 1. Be merciful unto me, O God, for man will swallow me up. He fighteth me daily and oppresseth me. My enemies would daily swallow me up. And they that be many that fight against me, O thou most high, what time I be afraid, I will trust in thee. Psalms 27 and 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing that I have desired of the Lord that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Don't quit church in trouble. Well, I got a little upset. The preacher didn't shake my hand. I'm gonna lay out a church. You didn't quit going to Walmart. Come on. You didn't quit pulling for LSU. I'm amazed that people squabble about noise in church when they used to go to a ball game. They used to play rock and roll music so loud you couldn't stand in the car. Come on. It's an interesting devil that fights against us. He didn't mind when you was at a ball game screaming and shouting and getting cold, spending incredible money. He didn't mind you screaming and shouting, but when you come to church and you start clapping your hands and start screaming hallelujah, he begins to tell you you're gonna get in the flesh. I'd like to tell the kingdom of hell, your kingdom is coming down. <laughs> Though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fail. The war should rise against me and this will I be confident. One thing I've desired of the Lord that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all, all the days of my life. To behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Notice these next words. For in the time of trouble, For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret of his tabernacle, shall he hide me, and he shall set me upon a rock. And now shall my head be lifted up above mine enemies round about. Therefore will I offer in this tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing. Yea, I will sing unto the Lord. 
Brother Ron. But you know, I've, I've served the Lord and all I can see is mistakes. I look around and I see mistakes in David. If we hadn't have been away, our house wouldn't have been destroyed. If, you know, if David hadn't have made some mistakes that he's made, we wouldn't be destroyed. I look in the scriptures and I can't see it myself. I look at Brother Brown's message and I see mistakes. And, and you know, I was, I was promised a double portion. God always keeps his promise. I'd like to remind you now, you are who you are because God said who you was. And where you get in trouble is you start having unbelief about what God said you was. Jesus looked at the scriptures to see what it said about him. You listen to sermons. Listen to the prophet of God and read this to see what it says about you. And then you believe what God said about you and you take God at his word. One time there was two men that was walking together. You're right. There was two men that was walking together. One had been the mightiest prophet in all of Israel. There were schools of the message that was around that thought they had better interpretations. But this man only kept his eyes on the prophet. Guys would tell him, just stop. He's going to be going away. Just stop. He kept his eyes on the prophet. This prophet had incredible major miracles to happen in his life. And this man named Elisha was following him. And he just kept his eyes on the message. Because he knew the message had power within it. He was kind of like Ruth. Just stay in the field and eat. Just stay there. Don't go nowhere else. Just stay in the field and eat. So he kept his eyes on Elijah. Elijah tried to get him discouraged and maybe go somewhere else. He kept his eyes on him. Finally one day they had a conversation. What is your desire? I want a double portion of what you got. The scripture said, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. I want that. The scripture said, if ye abide in me and my words abide in you, I want that. The scripture said, greater than these shall you do. I want that. The scripture said lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. I want that. The scripture said there's going to be a resurrection. I want that. The scripture said there's going to be a rapture. I want that. I want everything in the book. I want it. Well, what you're asking for is a hard thing. But if you see me when I go, so they came down to the body of water and they come to that place. Elijah took his coat off and he smoked the water and they walked across. Elisha believed it, so he walked with him. And they went over to the other side. And you see Elijah was looking in this meeting that he was getting ready to have. And there was chariots parked at every bush. Brother Brandon said he left those other chariots for me and you. climbed up inside of his chariot and it began to go up and as it was going up Elisha stood there and Elijah took his mantle off 
fell right down on Elisha. Now, Brother Branham said this. He said, God did not cut the robe to fit Elisha. He cut Elisha to fit the robe. It's not will this message fit you. It's will you fit the message. There will be a bride. There will be an invincible army. There will be a wife. I happen to be one of them. Now, how many in here in this building has had a critic? Let's go ahead and raise our hands. How many of you had a critic? I want you to look around. Go ahead and raise them back up. This is an exercise class. After church, I want to meet you that don't have any critics. I want you to write a book on how to live life without a critic. But let me just go ahead and answer the question before. Generally, it's people that have no critics have done nothing. And whether you know it or not, the critic is actually what makes you the masterpiece. <laughs> I know I'm hoarse. I hope I got through. The critic actually one testifies that you're a masterpiece. no doubt when he came back he took the robe and smote the same body of water he had asked for a double portion wonder how those people knew that he was going to get a double portion he testified about it that's what your critics do they listen to your testimony and you only testify what the word says about you. So he walks back to the same body of water and he says these words, where is the Lord God of Elijah? The same God that lived in Elijah was Jesus Christ. And that same God that lived in that body lives inside of you. So where is the Lord God? One. And then another miracle happens. Two. And then another miracle happens. Three. Then a miracle, another miracle happens. Four. And Elisha comes to a spot in his life to where he's now getting weak. That's when your critics start coming. He's one short. I don't know if y'all know it, but you know the message can't be right. It was one short. That proves that Elijah was wrong and now Elisha's wrong. He's one short. Remember, it wasn't a man that made the promise. Come on. William Branham didn't make the promise. God made you the promise. It wasn't Elijah that made the promise. God made the promise. Elisha knew that God that did all the other miracles is in charge of that last one. So he realizes that death angel is taking a grip. Yeah. And 
and he remembers the promise. All right, right. Come on. Here a few years ago, we were here and Sister Mariah was in a prayer line. The same night, Brother Aaron Oglesby, a miracle happens in his life. We had a vision of my, my, my daughter who could not have children. You know, you start speaking about a vision and then the devil starts whispering. You start speaking about what God says and then the devil starts whispering. I might as well kill some devils while I'm preaching. And so I, as we were going, the, since a child, she couldn't have a child. Right. She was born with a defect in her womb. She couldn't have children. But I'm not the one that said it. Right. Then my son-in-law's in an accident and it crushes his pelvis and crushes his backbone and crushes his shoulder. You've heard this over and over again. I touched the other night. Brother Tim Brood even comes and prays with him at the hospital. Brother Stanky can testify of this. If you're really wanting to die, don't invite Brother Tim to come pray for you. whisper in my ear you said God said she was going to have a child now it really looks impossible it really looks impossible you lied on God you lied on God Well, I took comfort in the scriptures. So I encouraged myself in the scriptures. So I didn't have to go slow. But so when all the critics were stoning me, I encouraged myself in the scriptures. God told Abraham, you're gonna have a son. God told him you're gonna have a son. It didn't matter what anybody else said. God said, I'm gonna have a son. I'm gonna have it by Sarah. God said it. So if it's up to God, God will bring it to pass. God will bring it to pass. If God said it, God will bring it to pass. If God said it, God will bring it to pass. I want you to get it now. It doesn't matter what the critic says. You can count your days and count your months and count your time. It don't matter if God said it, he'll bring it to pass. bring it to pass. God will bankrupt heaven to take care of his word. This message is the truth. You don't have to criticize or kind of figure it all out. God will bring it to pass in his season. At his time, he'll bring it to pass. You know, if I was a believer of Elisha, I don't want to carry his bones. What would you do, Brother Ron? He's one short. I might be the miracle. 
I might be the miracle. So let me carry his bones. Let me pack his body to the grave. Let me carry it to the tomb. Don't hold that for a while. You need it. They laid him in the tomb. And they could hear all the whispers. One short. And his eyeballs begin to deteriorate. And his skin began to deteriorate. His hair began to go back. Skin became sinew. And literally it was just his bones laying there dry. And there was a war that was happening. There was a war that was happening. And a man got killed in the war. And so they picked him up and they started carrying. And they were fleeing. And they came to a hole. And they throwed his body in on those bones. in on those bones. That dead body came to life. Hallelujah. God fulfilled his word. this body up God heal these lungs I told God in that in that office right back there when I was all by myself and the enemy was telling me you're not going to preach tonight I walked back out where your old notes are and I laid my hands on your old notes I'm sorry if it's a private chamber I'm sorry if I trespassed a little bit, but I went in and laid my hands on Brother Tim's old notes. And I said, God, you raised a crippled boy up to be one of the greatest men ever preached in the whole world. Thither the ephod to David. 
And David inquired at the Lord saying, shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered. I love it when God says, pursue. For thou shalt surely overtake them. And without fail, recover all. Can you give me about five more minutes? I don't care what the devil has stole from you. I don't care how big, how bad, how ugly the devil has been that has came in your life and has robbed you of your victory and robbed you of your joy and robbed you of your health and robbed you of your strength. Robbed you of your children. Robbed you of your wife. Robbed you. God said, pursue. God said, overtake it. And recover it all. you're his sons this week what has he told us he'll fight our battles what has he told us through this week you're armed and dangerous Slip tonight, you don't have to stay that way. You're living with complexes tonight, you don't have to stay that way. You're living an up and down life, you don't have to stay that way. Satan's got a hold to your body, it don't have to stay that way. don't have to stay that way. It don't have to stay that way. It don't have to stay that way. Brother Ron, you've done said it before. I want you to get it. It don't have to stay that way. I want you to say it. It ain't gonna stay that way. You got a prayer in your life before you come to this meeting. It don't have to stay that way. It don't have to stay that way. Hallelujah. It don't have to stay that way. Hallelujah. Brother Ron, I'm waiting until that end time revival. It's happening. It is not an accident you're here. It is not an accident you're here. God had you here. As a matter of fact, for decades you've been looking for your plan of life, of what God wants to do in your life. I want to tell you, you have arrived. made you many offers he's made you many offers he's whispering in your ear a whole lot of bad stuff but you have to tell him I'm not selling my gift out I am a son of God somebody's going to overcome in this day it's me it's me I will overcome It's more than a song. It's more than a quote. It's a reality. Somebody 
will overcome depression. Somebody will overcome nervousness. Somebody will overcome suicide. Somebody will overcome. It's me. to lose my children I refuse to lose my grandchildren so I'm going to go after them I'm going after them I'm going after them I'm going after them I'm going after them them. I am determined I am determined I'm not listening to the critic. I'm not listening to the lies of the devil. I'm going to recover them all. Make a list. Make a list. I'm going to get them all. Mr. Spencer, what was stole out of your home? away fellowship he replaced love with jealousy I want my love back I want my joy back I want my shout back shout forget something on the list I'll get the eggs I'll get the milk I'll get the flour I'll forget the bread so I'll miss something on the list but on God's list on God's list I lay it before him And I pursue it. And I chase it. And I chase it. And we refuse to give up our family. We refuse to give up our church. We refuse to give up our victory. So we chase it. We chase it. this part when you get there you kill the enemy and you take back what he stole from you These are my final words. 
on this side of the Red Sea. Miriam looked back. <laughs> she didn't need no Church of Christ around her today. Because she'd already read the quote, anything without emotion is dead and needs to be buried. She saw the men that beat on her and beat on her family and tried to destroy her life all this time and her enemy was dying in the back. And she grabbed her tambourine and she began to wave before God. for the devil we're going to have one mass prayer line and this time I want everybody in this building to come into it now I want you to make your list I want you to make your list Brother, it's going to take a long time to go through the prayer line tonight. Oh, it's just going to take just a few seconds here. You preached the other day that there's pull, third pull is a prayer line. Isn't it right? So now we're going to have one. It's going to be a line from this place all the way over there. And it's going to go all the way back. Then all the way back. It's going to go all the way into the mezzanine. I want everybody in this building right now to join. You come in New York, you're in the prayer line. Have you made your list yet? It don't matter that you're Baptist. We made a list. We made a list. You want your health. You want your strength. All right. I don't know what my future holds for me. You're forgiven. Hallelujah. 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 Take a little time. Come on. forget us. Amen. He don't forget us. Amen. God's going to work it out. He did right. You come out of a great lineage. Where's your mom? He won't forget him. He won't forget him. He won't forget him. He won't forget him. He won't forget him.
God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. 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 He won't forget us. He won't forget us. He won't forget us. I'm waiting on you to make your list out. She's going to be okay. You know. You know I don't have to talk to you. You know. He can bring a restoration. You know that. He can do that. He's greater. He's greater than every complex. He's greater. He's greater than every situation. Isn't that right? Is that right? I bless you. I bless you. You guys making your list? God ain't forgot you. He ain't forgot you. He ain't forgot you. My first scripture was Abigail. So I had to walk all over, all over this building to find her. So I went and got her. Amen. So David went and got his wife back. Josh, the devil thought he could take her away from you.
hands on it. Sister Connie, lay your hands on Sister Karen. That thing that goes and comes and goes and comes, I rebuke it right here tonight. I rebuke it right here tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. pursuer and recover it. May this be the last night you fight with that thing again. Won't you lay your hands over on your neighbor right now? I make a claim right now. I don't care what the situation is. before you now in the name of Jesus Christ that name that is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow and every tongue shall bow. Satan take your hands off of God's property you are defeated you don't have the keys to your own house you don't have arrows to your own bow we rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ. We take it back. We take our property back. Our victory, our family, our joy, our health, our strength, Father. Our children, Lord. Our families, our homes. I take it back tonight. I take it back tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. May it be settled tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lazarus, come forth. Jesus said, I have power to lay my life down and power to take it up again. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we raised our hands before you and we've took our claims before you, a living God, an infinite God that knows every situation, every moment, every thought, every worry. God, we bring it before you now because it is the season for it and we receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, just rejoice. Just lift your hands and rejoice. Tell the devil I'm never going back. I'm never going back. I'm never going back again. Satan, you can't have me. I'm not your prisoner. I'm not your slave no longer. I'm free. The prison doors are open and I am free. Hallelujah. Let the redeemed of God say so. redeemed of God say so tonight. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. 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 Make your claim right now. Make your claim right now. If I needed salvation, I needed the Holy Ghost, I'd run to this altar tonight. 
I'd run. I'd pursue it. I'd run with all of my heart. I will not go back. I'll not be the slave no longer. God filled me with a revival like never before in my life. I'm tired of being beaten. I want to say this to you. He's here. You don't have to beg him. You don't have to plead with him. He's here. And he's here for you to have a special moment with him. here as it was on that mountain brother Timothy when he changed your life the other day he's here right now the same presence is here now that was in the room he's here now it's real new right now could we just worship him a moment could you just praise him a moment could you just take it to the king for a moment invited him take me to the king and now we're here with him 
Call their name. Call their name now. Call their name. Sister Ware, call their name. Call their name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because he remembers because he put their name in the book. Nothing 
to take a step towards my the offer knee and one day I'm gonna take just another step towards my the offer knee and one day I know that that final step oh it's going to set me free am I the offer knee Just a little higher into the perfect world. And oh, come up just a little higher into the agape love. Oh, come up a little higher. Soaring through the heavenly, mighty off of me. Oh, I hear it calling me. Oh, and don't Little children, should death knock on your door? Don't you know that death? Oh, it's just a doorway that leads to that heavenly shore. Oh, cause over there, there's no heartache, there's no sorrow, grief, or pain. Just perfect love, oh, peace and joy beyond compare. Oh, and one day. Gonna take a step towards my the upper knee. One day I'm gonna take just another step towards my the upper knee. And one day I know that final step. A little higher into the perfect world. And oh, come up, oh, a little higher into the agape love. Oh, come up, a little higher, soaring through the heavenly, mighty off of me. Will I look? Oh, I can see victory Just up around the next curve In the road That old devil He's got to flee Cause God's army is marching Marching onward Oh, to slay that old enemy Around the next curve I see King Jesus coming for me Oh, Well, I can look, oh, and I can see victory just up around the next curve in the road. That old devil, he's got to flee, cause God's army is marching, she's marching onward.
take a step toward my theophany. One day I'm going to take another step into my theophany. They'll never 
no shame on me there'll never be a shame
Yeah. 
victory tonight. How many has got the joy back? The happiness back? The worship back? The love back? And just for our critics, it ain't no shame on me. Because if you could feel what I'm feeling, you would want some of it too. If you could get a little taste of this joy and this happiness and, and what we're going to experience in eternity, you'd want some of it too. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Mercy, I think my list has been filled already tonight. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He's that kind of God. And he will remember. And he will not forget. Hallelujah. Well, the wonderful thing about this, we still got another service. <laughs> Glory. And I know I don't have to tell you, come expect and believe it. Oh my goodness. It'd be a sin for us to disbelieve after what we've seen and experienced and seen God move. And I mean, just by just show of hand, said God move for me tonight. out this year that Brother David Mayer would come and, and be with us before our meeting started so he kind of started our meeting so to speak and um, spoke that the time is now for the phenomenal for the miraculous and I believe we can say amen amen, amen. be friends with some of the greatest people on earth and I uh, really appreciate Brother Dave and Sister Ann they'll be leaving in the morning so flying back he's got to get back home to his, back to his work and things and we just want to say we appreciate you coming Brother David <laughs> being with us sure have been a blessing to our hearts and our lives and Amen. So I'm, I'm just going to ask if you'd come and dismiss us this evening in prayer. Amen. And it's just, there, there, listen, there's no way to just right, rightfully dismiss a service like this. It's impossible. But we do have another service in the morning, and we want to come back refreshed and ready to worship the Lord and, and to give it another go with all that we have. Amen. And so. We want to remember Brother David, Sister Ann, also the, our Brother Mill, Sister Ruth, Sister Naomi that will be going home on Monday, I believe. So God will give them traveling mercies and flying. So let's just pray together. Amen. Let's bow our heads. Our dear Heavenly Father, Lord's words cannot express how thankful we are. Father God, we came to these meetings not just to see a man, but to meet you, Lord Jesus. And Father, how thankful we are that you spoke to our hearts. Father God, faith cometh by hearing, hearing of the word of God. Truly we can say, our faith has raised and Lord we can speak when Satan comes around and tell him boo devil 
get thee behind me because the victory is mine father god you're still the great god jehovah the same yesterday today and forever lord we've seen you meeting after meeting and lord we know you will keep on lord because you are a great god and your word says it's from glory to glory so lord tomorrow morning we pray may you anoint your speaker father brother wayne and may you speak through him and lord even though our ways may go apart lord we know that you will be with us your lord even in us until the end of the earth and Father, we want to thank you, Lord. May you bless your servant, Brother Ron. May you renew his strength. Father, Lord, bless all, all, the, all those that have labored, Father. May you give them a special blessing, Father. And truly, we want to give you all the praise and all the glory. Now I pray, may you be with us on the road. May you renew our strength. Give, it a, give us a good night's rest, Father. And when we come back tomorrow morning, we know that you're going to bless us again. And Lord, be with us. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Why don't you just turn around, shake one of his hand, say it's been good to be in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We, we have some more things for you this evening take of as far as naturally food natural food be right over here again in that this portico it'll be only there for 30 minutes tonight and we ask that you take your trash and things with you that way that they don't have to stay here late cleaning up and they can those that are working and taking care of things they can get a good night's rest too and be able to come back refreshed and renewed in the morning so but it'll be available starting now for 30 minutes so if you'd like to do that and have some that you can help yourself. God bless you this evening. We'll see you in the morning at 11 o'clock.